That is sincerely my favorite thing. You know, one of the best teaching tools you can have is to help somebody else with something. You, you, you know that? So let me, did I tell you all last week about trying to explain things to somebody else, mm -hmm. right? Yep. If you try that, sometimes you'll be shocked at how much more it'll make you learn about the subject because in teaching things requires you to learn it at a depth of knowledge that you, you ordinarily wouldn't have. All right, turning your book to chapter four. We, we are not, we're definitely not going to finish the math in chapter 4 today because there's quite a bit of math, but we can probably get through most of the other topics in chapter 4. So chapter 4 deals with, yes? We don't have the chapter 4 notes. You don't have the slides. Oh, oh, yeah. goodness. oh goodness. You are so needy. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so what I'll do is ask somebody to grab them off the printer for me in just a minute if y'all don't mind. Somebody don't mind doing that. I'll start talking and we'll do that. Should be very Okay. Think there's enough paper in there? Yes. I loaded paper, so it should be fine. I'll go back to the beginning. Carolyn's got us under control. She's on paper. I don't want to wait. I want them in front of me. <laughs> she wants them. Now, she said. Now. I can't write that fast. Okay. Luckily, this chapter does not require a ton of note-taking and or writing, quite honestly. This is the shortest chapter, other than chapter one. This is the shortest chapter in the book. Um, but most of what's in this chapter is actually math-based. Okay? So we're going to spend an extensive amount of time doing acreage math. That's why I want you to memorize those formulas that you've got in that packet with regard to acreage math before we touch base on that. But chapter four deals with describing property. So how do we describe real estate? Okay. Well, basically we need an accurate way to describe the property we're selling. You think about it, doesn't it make sense? If you're selling somebody a piece of real estate, wouldn't you want to make sure that the contract specifies exactly the piece of real estate that you're conveying to them? Yeah. So what ways do we traditionally think of to describe a piece of real estate? If you were sending somebody somewhere, what would you give them? An address. Addresses, generally speaking, are not good enough for us in the real estate industry. Can you think of why? Why might addresses not work for selling real property? They change. So would you ever want to have it happen where you have a contract for a piece of property and all of a sudden the address is different. Would that be a problem? Mm -hmm. Yeah. How about if you have a deed that had an address on it and it changed? And you don't even know what property they own any longer. Would that be a problem? So we don't want to use things like addresses. We use what we call formal references to property. So in your book on page 69, we talk about the way North Carolina describes property. And North Carolina uses a very old system of property description. I'm going to fast forward here to a map for just a second and give you an idea. Okay, so look at this map. The States that are shaded in the dark over here on the right hand side of the screen are the states that describe property in the same manner as the state of North Carolina. Do any of you see any similarity, anything that would tie those states together that would make them similar to each other? Oh, if you count it, there are 13 of them. They are the original 13 colonies. Almost every piece of law in this state is based on what we call English common law because this was an original colony 
And because when they settled North Carolina, they didn't just bring themselves, they brought their systems of government with them. And so, if you were to go buy property in London, guess what system of describing property you would see? Meets and bounds. The same exact thing you see here in Raleigh. We use the same system of describing property because it came directly from the United Kingdom. So, we use the meets and bounds description. We're going to talk about why we don't like that, but we don't have a choice. Okay? We don't like it because, look in your book real quickly. On page 7. On page 70, there in the middle, where it says a tract of land located in blank, does everybody see where I'm reading? Mm -hmm. That is an example of a meets and bounds description of an exceptionally somewhat simple property. It's the one that's just below it. It says a tract of land located in blank, and that would be the county name, described as follows. Beginning at the intersection of the east line of Jones Road and the south line of Skull Drive, how, how many of you they've already lost right there? <laughs> Vince. Vince is not a word we use very often any longer, is it? We're not reading Shakespeare here, we're talking about property. Vince north, 90 degrees east, along the south line of Skull Drive, 200 feet. Vince south, 15 degrees east, how y'all following along with this, right? 216.5 feet, more or less. What kind of description is that? More or less, and it's not like, 200 feet more, it's 216.5 more, that's an awfully specific number to be more or less, isn't it? Um, to the center thread of Red Skull Creek, thence north 4 degrees west along the center line of said creek. Why, why would it be along the center line of said creek, by the way? Because it's a, a non-navigable, riparian body of water, so the property line is going to be what? It's the middle. I'm just checking, make sure we're and that's east to the east line of Jones Road, that's north 105 feet more or less along the east line of Jones Road to the place of beginning. <laughs> oh, wow. That is a meets and bounds property description. So what did we just do? We took a tour of what? The perimeter. The perimeter. A meets and bounds property description is designed to be a perimeter, that just means the outer edge, it's a definition of where the lines are, right? So imagine if you took a can of spray paint and you said, start here. First of all, you need what with you? Compass. A compass, right? Yeah, I gotta have a compass. How many of you know how to read a compass? You lost already. <laughs> you gotta have a compass and you gotta go in that direction for this many feet, right? So imagine you're marking your paint, 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 and I stop, and then what I do? I turn and I go in a different direction on my compass for this many feet and mark, 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 mark. And ideally, if I've done it right, where do I end up? Back at the center. Back at the same place where I started, right? So, vocabulary you need to be familiar with for reeks and bounds to recognize on the test, okay? You need to know this word monument. You need to know what a monument is. A monument is anything that we use to sort of mark where we start, where we end, where we make turns. Now, this is a really old system of measurement. What kinds of monuments do you think they used in the 1600s and 1700s to demark these property lines? Trees, stumps, rocks, creeks, those kinds of things. What do you think is the inherent problem with meets and bounds property descriptions based on that? Monuments can be moved, can they not? Now, in today's world, we still use meets and bounds because this is our legal description of property. We no longer use natural monuments. We put iron stakes in the ground now, and those are the monuments. But we still use this insanely crazy method of describing property because it's what we have. Does that make sense for everybody else? Okay. So make sure you're familiar with the vocabulary of monuments. Make sure you know that you begin and end at the place of beginning. The place of beginning and the place of ending are the same point. And make sure you know that in North Carolina, this is the way that we describe legal property. Now, folks, meet some, that, this tiny little lot took that much. What if you had a big piece of land with very irregular boundaries? Would it get to be a very long description? My family farm in Edgecombe County 
has been in our family since the late 1700s. The meets and bounds property description is 14 <coughs> pages long. 14 pages of property description. And if you're selling that property, when you get to the part where it says, what are you selling, guess what you have to include? Oh, no. All 14 pages, because that is how you legally describe that property in North Carolina. Now, extrapolate that to every single piece of real estate in this state. That is an amazing amount of information to deal with. Would you agree with that? Yeah. And it is for that reason that we don't, and that, that's just that same property, by the way, it is for that reason that we do not want you dealing with meets and bounds property descriptions on sales contracts and on deeds. Because what are you going to do if something's 14 pages long and you have to transpose it over to a contract? What's, what, what, what's most likely to happen? An error. error. An error. A mistake. Would you agree with that? Mm -hmm. So, I don't want you to mistake what I'm about to say. We are a meets and bounds state. We still use meets and bounds. That does not mean we have not recognized that this is a dumb system <laughs> and we need something that is more workable. Okay, does everybody follow along with me? So what I'm about to talk to you about is the more workable solution that we have come up with. It is called reference to a recorded plat map or the lot and block system. All right, this is a plat map. What does that look like to you? It's a subdivision. That word's important. Mm -hmm. Anytime we divide land, guess what we just created? A new plat map. A subdivision. And along with it, a plat map. A plat map is a map of a subdivision. In this state, when you go to divide one big piece of land into two small pieces of land, Guess what you have to record at the county courthouse? A plat map. Even if you're just dividing one piece into two, you've got to have this drawn up. And who do you have to hire to draw this for you? A surveyor. A surveyor. Because they're the ones who can write that new meets and bounds description for each. Because you recognize if you take one lot and you divide it into two, the meets and bounds description is going to change, right? Is it going to have a brand new meets and bounds description for each one of those new lots? Is everybody following my mindset here? So let's talk about why this makes our life simple. Or not simple, but more simple. If the surveyor has been hired to draw us a pretty map and to create a new meets and bounds description of that property, couldn't we ask the surveyor to attach the, the, the new meets and bounds description to the pretty map? Wouldn't that be a reasonable request? Say, give us the map and give us the new property description all together. Could we make that request? Yes, sir. What do you think we're going to do with that map? Record it. We're going to take it down to the county courthouse and record it. Record it. Why? we got to tell the public that we just did what? That we just chopped this big piece of property down into two small pieces of property. Everybody with me so far? So now the status is... We have created two brand new lots. Are you with me? And if I were to send you to the courthouse and say, oh, by the way, there's a map of these new lots down there, you can go look at it. If you were to look at that map, what would you also be immediately looking at? The property description. The property description. In what format? Meets and bounds. Meets and bounds. So, if I need to use meets and bounds, but I don't want to write all that down, <laughs> What could I tell you? I can tell you to do what? Go down there and look at yourself, right? Go to the county courthouse, get the book, it's on this page, there's your description. That's what we do. Rather than write down the full meets and bounds description of all of these properties, we simply say, Go to the county courthouse and we tell them what book and what page number they can find this map. We're selling lot number 15. And if they look at lot number 15, guess what's going to be right there with it? The meets and bounds description of lot number 15. See, we're not giving you the meets and bounds description, but we're making a reference to it. That We're referring you back to it. Does that make sense for everybody? 
is that a much shorter and more foolproof method than putting the whole meats in bounds description? Because all we're relying on at that point is that who got it right the first time? The surveyor. We're not relying on us copying it over every time. Does, does everybody follow why we would do that? So we call that again the lot and block system. Somebody want to check the copier? Does anybody know where the copier yeah. is? All right, it's around the corner to the right. Anybody want to volunteer to go? The first person volunteers passes the class. <laughs> <laughs> it's on the back. It's on the back hallway. Okay. So check, go back there and take a right. You'll see it. It should be out on the right end of the copier. All right. Nobody checks the surveyor. We hope they're right. They're right. They're right, always. They're always right. Uh, hopefully, hopefully, whoever at the county is approving the subdivision checks behind the surveyor. That's what the system is designed to do. Is that the, the person checking at the county, when we go record that plat now, they are checking behind the surveyor to make sure. Yeah, two lots next to each other. Could you just change that property line and so it won't be your No, we just had to do that. Oh, you cannot do that. What was that, I'm sorry? Two lots right next to each other. You want to change, let's say, the straight line to a zigzag line. Yep. So that my encroachment isn't on his property anymore. Yep. You can do that? Sure you can. If, if, But there's going to be a lot of complications involved with doing that. Um, number one, do either of you have loans on that property? Because if you have loans on that property, the lenders would have to release their liens in order to free up the properties to be recombined, to redraw the property lines. And the lenders are not going to release their liens. So that's going to be one complicating factor. The other thing is just in paying somebody to redraw the lines and where those new lines are going to be. Looks like they were not quite all copied. So Here's some an extra one. If you <laughs> extra one. Be a couple short here, so I'm going to let somebody back here run back and check the copier in like another three minutes, okay? Shouldn't take long for the rest of them to shoot out. All right, so this reference is what we're going to utilize almost always in every sales contract. In the deeds themselves, we're going to use this lot and block system. Now, where is it most likely that properties have been subdivided so that we've created flat maps for them? In what kind of setting? Rural or urban? Urban. Urban. So this would be by far the most common way to sell property in what kind of areas? In the urban areas of the state where property has been subdivided over the years. Might you run into areas and uh, uh, properties in rural areas that have never been subdivided? And when you do, what's going to be the only way you can describe that property? Yeah. Meets and bounds, and so the, the sales contract would have to reference the full meets and bounds property description. Does that make sense for everybody? Mm -hmm. Following with this stuff? Okay. Again, why is this important? So we can do what? So we can properly identify, describe the property, make sure we have no mistake about what we are actually selling. Okay? Everybody good with that? Good. All right? So, this just talks about what you would find on a subdivision flat map. There's nothing on here that you're going to be tested on, okay? So, just, it's just for reference purposes on this slide. We could also potentially refer back to other publicly recorded documents like the deed itself. The deed itself is a publicly recorded document and on there is going to be a legal description. We try to stay away from this because what you could get into is one deed referencing another deed. What if you pulled up Tom's deed and Tom's deed said I'm pur he purchased the property that was deeded to Demetrius on this page number. So now you got to go find what to figure out what the property is. Demetrius. you got to pull Demetrius's deed. You pull up Demetrius's deed and it says I'm purchasing the property that was deeded to me by Pat on this deed. So now what do you got to do? You gotta find Pat's deed. Now we're four deep into this thing, right? Eventually we may run into what? A missing document. Would that be a big problem if we had made all these references to other deeds and then all of a sudden we don't have the, the one document that's got the description? So we try not to do that. We would like to have yes. I'm sorry? It's out of paper. It can't possibly be out of paper. I mean, I'm sure it's telling you that, but it can't possibly be unless we have a paper thief, because I put like <laughs> thousands of paper. <laughs> oh, 
So in McKenzie's defense, it was saying tray two was out of paper, but that's not the reason it stopped. It stopped because the whole punch thing was full of whole punches oh, and oh, oh, it's oh, empty. Yeah. So it's, it's, it's going again now. Okay? So this reference to other reported documents is really discouraged. Ideally, you'll either use the meets and bounds description or reference to what? What reference document can you use? Or the lot block or plat map. means the same thing. Okay? We don't like to use informal references. Street address? No. Will we probably put the street address on a sales contract? Yes. Yeah, because that's how most of us are going to commonly recognize it. But in addition to that, we want to use the actual legal description. Okay? Let's talk about how other states do it. And this is one of those cases where, as much as I love the state of North Carolina, we don't do it the best possible way. We do it the old way. Other states utilize a much more recent system, if you can consider Thomas Jefferson recent, um, <laughs> because the Government Rectangular Survey was created by Thomas Jefferson prior to him being President of the United States. He created a system of describing land called the Rectangular Survey, and now we call it the Government Rectangular Survey. Thomas Jefferson's vision was to basically take the rest of the land mass, I won't say the rest of the country because it wasn't part of the United States at that point in time, the rest of the land mass, and keep in mind, in Thomas Jefferson's time, did they have any idea how far that went? No. No, it was just land. As far as they knew, it went forever. So Thomas Jefferson said, well, if you just put a grid over it, it doesn't really matter how big it is because you can just keep doing what with the grid? Add more sections. Does that make sense? And so the Government Rectangular Survey was born. And the Rectangular Survey simply places a grid over the map and it divides everything west of Tennessee and Kentucky into a grid. And so there are going to be some vocabulary words that you need to be familiar with here. The vocabulary words that you need to recognize with the Government Rectangular Survey are range, township, section, range, township, section. Those are all vocabulary words that we recognize with the Government Rectangular Survey. Now, townships. Townships envisioned by Thomas Jefferson. Remember, we're talking about a time when the primary mode of transportation was what? Horse and carriage. Horse. So towns weren't envisioned to be very large things. Thomas Jefferson thought that no reasonable town should be bigger than six miles across in either direction. Six miles by six miles was plenty big enough. So Thomas Jefferson said, in his mind, this was Thomas Jefferson's mind. Every town was going to be exactly the same size. They were all going to be six miles across each way, six by six. So what is that? How many square miles? 36 square miles. Every city in this United States was going to be 36 square miles, according to Mr. Jefferson. So townships in the Government Rectangular Survey are always how big? 36 square miles. Six miles wide by six miles tall. Every single... How many of you have flown across the United States? When you look out the window, what do you see suspiciously? Square. Everything is in square. Thank you, Mr. Jefferson. When you drive in a Midwestern city, what do you notice about the streets? Everything's in a grid, right? Everything is this many blocks that way and this many... Don't do that in carry. Right? Somebody moves here and you try to tell them how to drive around Cary. They're like, okay, you go to Cary Parkway. Well, I just passed Cary Parkway, yeah. but which one did you pass? Yeah. What do you mean? 
you know, like, I've seen Kenny Park way three times. Yes, it's a circle. That's why I've seen that three times, right? Somebody asked me one time, which way do I go on the beltway? I said, it doesn't matter. It blew their mind. It blew their mind. I said, they said, I think I went the wrong way on the beltway. I said, it's not possible. It's a circle. You can't go the wrong way on a circle. You can go the short way or the long way, but you're going to get there no matter which way you're going. They couldn't understand it, right? So you don't get such things in the Midwest. Everything's in a grid because of the government rectangular survey, the way things are laid out. So the building blocks of townships are something called sections. Every township is broken into 36 sections. How many square miles did we say there were in a township? 36. 36. How many sections did we say there were in a township? 36. So what does that tell you about the size of a section? It's one square mile. It is one square mile. Every section is one square mile. And for your purposes, and this is the most important number in the government rectangular survey. You ready for it? There are 640 acres in one square mile. So one section always is equal to how many acres? 640 acres. Every one, not some of them, all of them. Every section is always 640 acres in the government rectangular survey, which also happens to be one square mile. One square mile equals 640 acres. Is everybody with me so far? And if you want a real history lesson, you start talking about where an acre comes from. Anybody know where an acre comes from? How, you have any idea how obscure that measurement is? 43. Well, it's 43,560 square feet, but where did we come up with how much space is an acre? To give you a visual representation, a football field is roughly an acre. If you want a visual representation, a football field, not counting the end zones, is roughly an acre. That's a big piece of land. Would you agree with that? It's not a small area. This was the amount of land that one man could supposedly plow in a day with a mule. Do you know how crazy that is? I would not make it from one end of the football field to the other end of the day with a mule. Me and the mule would be dead. But supposedly, one person was supposed to plow that much land in a day with a mule. No. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. I don't know if I could plow that much in a day with a tractor, much less a mule. That's a lot of land, okay? But that's we, these are very obscure measurements, and that's why we get into kind of obscure things here. But the nice thing about the government rectangular survey is that every section is always what? 640 acres. That's going to be really important to you. Because when you start reading, and this is just some breakdowns here, okay? When you start reading these, these descriptions, you start seeing the northwest quarter of the southeast quarter, the southern half of the southwest quarter of the northeastern quarter of section four, you're like, what? It seems like the most daunting thing ever. It's actually the most genius thing ever. Let me show you how the government rectangular survey works. Not a definition of it, but how it works. Go out of here for a second and switch over to this. So, let's look at the government rectangular survey. So, let's say we see a description that looks something like this. We have the northern half of the southern half of the southwestern quarter of the northeastern quarter of the eastern half, section 12, okay? Looks complex to me, right? Except what do we know about section 12? I'm just going to draw section 12. What shape should I draw? Square. Square. Hmm, we already did that, didn't we? Mm -hmm. And we know specifically that there are how many acres in that square? 640 acres represented in that square, correct? Is everybody with me so far? So, the government rectangular survey, the only thing tricky about it is you do not read left to right, you read right to left. So we start at section 12 and we work our way backward. What's the first thing we come in contact with? We start at section 12 and work our way backward, read right to left. 
What do we start? What do we come in contact with first? Six hundred and forty. All right, keep going. What's the next thing? The eastern what? Half. Point to your east. That way, right? To the right. So here's what we know. So that square is section twelve. This square is section twelve. So we know that our property is in the eastern half of section 12. Does everybody follow that? Mm -hmm. So we've eliminated everything over here. It's gone. Correct? Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. What's the, and so now we, we're done with this. What's the next thing we come into? North, the northeastern quarter. Which way is north going to be? Uh, which way is east going to be? Right. And we're doing how much? A quarter of what we have left. So how about right there? Does that look right? Does that look like the northeastern quarter to you? Mm -hmm. Sure. So what have we done? Eliminated all of that. Does that make sense for everybody? What are we doing? We're locating this property on a map, aren't we? We're, it's, like, it's like the zoom button on Google Earth, isn't it? So all we're doing is zooming in further and further and further. The southwestern quarter, which way is south going to be? Down. Which way is west? west? To the left. So we're down to there, right? Eliminate. I know this is not to scale or anything like that, but you get the point. Mm -hmm. We're down to that box. And now we are at the what? Southern, Southern half. half. Southern half. So we've eliminated this. Mm -hmm. And what do we know now? North. North. That would mean we would eliminate the southern part down here. So after all of that, there's our lot. There's our lot. How hard was that? Could you read a meets and bounds description and point it out on a map like that? No. No, you got to find the dead tree at the corner of some <laughs> creek and a stump, right? You know, to even get started. And most importantly, you got to go there. Think about think about the meets and bounds description. You can't possibly map it out unless you go there because you got to find the stomp, right? And then you to start, and then you've got to walk around with all those distances. You can do this from a thousand miles away, right? Not only do I know how to find that lot on a map, what do I also know about that? I know exactly how many acres that is because I know how many acres section twelve was, right? What did I start with? 640. And what's the first thing I divided it by? Half. So I divided by 2, right? What's the second thing I divided by? Quarter. What's the third thing I divided by? Four. What's next? Two. And two. Couldn't I type that into a calculator? Mm -hmm. And if you do, you'll know exactly not only where that thing is on a map, but exactly how many acres is represented by that description. Within 10 seconds of looking at it, you can find it on a map, and you can tell exactly how big it is. Mr. Jefferson is a pretty smart dude, huh? That's what's amazing. How many acres we got there? Five. Five acres. Oh, five acres. Can you do that? That's math you would see on the government rectangular survey on the test. Is they're going to give you that description and they want to know if you can tell them how many acres it is. So just doing it the shortcut way without actually drawing it, what would you do for the math? You would just take 640 and what? And divide by what? Each one of the denominators, which is the bottom number all the way across. And that's going to tell you how many acres you're working with. How we feel about that on the test? Can we do it? <coughs> If you say and, you would add, but you're not, you're not going to see that on the test. So you, in that, when you see and, you're adding two lots together. That's right. That's right. Okay. Just keep punching them in. 640 divided by, divided by, divided by, divided by. The denominators all the way across. Anybody not coming up with five when you do that? Why do we start with 640? Because every section, no matter what section they told us to start with, is what? 640 acres. So at that point, we're just breaking that 640 down into smaller and smaller chunks. How do we feel about that? 
Okay? I'm asking. Yeah. Do another one. Do another one? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> That's fine. That's why, that's why we do them. That's why I ask. Okay? So, I'm not going to draw this one out. I'm just going to write out the description. Okay? Let's say we have the northern half of the southwest quarter of the southeast quarter of the western half of the eastern half of the southeastern quarter of the northwest quarter of section 18. So we wouldn't have to find the, the location like you did on the other one? Nope, I'm just showing you what it does. So I'm breaking down pieces of what section? 18. Section 18. And section 18 is how many acres? 640. 640. How did I know that? All the sections are what? 640 acres, which is the same thing as one square what? Mile. Mile. That's one square mile of 640. Did you know that in one square mile there are 640 football fields? That is a big piece of land. Would you agree with that? Okay, so 640 acres. I shouldn't talk about football. Is football going on? It's sad that we're here. Right? 640. What are we dividing by? What's the first number? We're, four. Remember, we read right to left, right? Four. What's the first number we're dividing by? Four. four. Divided by what? Four. 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 Divided by two. Two. Divided by two. Two. Divided by four. Four. Divided by four. Four. Divided by two. Two. And if we punch all those in, what do we come up with? Point three one two five acres, which is not quite a third of an acre. Would that be about the size of a residential lot, you think, in a lot of neighborhoods? So could that be a legal description of a neighborhood lot? Absolutely. Absolutely. How do we feel about that? Decent? That's the government rectangle survey. Like you just drew it out previously? Mm -hmm. Did you have to draw those out? Nope. Okay, okay, so I can just squash that in the room. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Was that confusing for you? Yes. Why? Because I thought you saw a lot of lines and shading and then green at the end. Uh huh. <laughs> <laughs> but what were they all lines and shading up? Halves and what? Quarters. And quarters. Can you draw something in half? Do it one step at a time. You know why it looks confusing? Because tying your shoes look confusing the first time somebody shows oh, yeah. you how to do it. So what do we do with it? Keep practicing. Keep practicing what though? What do you do when you teach somebody to do it? Say that again. You show them the steps, right? Everything in this life is confusing if you look at it and you say, I don't know how to do that. Nothing in this life is confusing if you break it down to its smallest steps and you learn how to do that and then you just break them out. You do them. So what I'm saying to you, it's a lesson in there. Don't, pay, don't look at a bunch of lines in a great shape. Nobody, nobody's going to look at this drawing. If somebody came behind me and looked at that, I'd be like, what the hell was he doing? <laughs> right? But... How would I start? So let's just show you how not confusing it could potentially be. If I just drew, and I'm going to draw it small. If I just drew section 18 right here, right? Give me the first piece of that. I'm reading right to left. So if I start right to left, what's the first piece I'm going to break it down into? Is it a quarter or a half? Tell me that. Quarter. It's, quarter. A quarter. it's a quarter. And which quarter is it? Northwest. North. West quarter, right? Which way is north? Uh, up. Which way is west? west? Okay, so. Up. Can you draw, start that with a cross? I think that's And left, right? right? <coughs> so what we're saying is that our lot is somewhere inside that part of section 18. And then what are we going to do next? What's the next one? 
So we're divided into quarters again, right? So I'll do what? There we go. Tara said so I divide it into quarters again, right? Because I'm only breaking down the section that we're we're not going back out into the big section. We we're, we're zooming in every time, right? So we're breaking it into quarters again. And which one do we want? We want the southeastern. So that's going to be that one, right? Does that make sense? Yes. And then on the next one, what do we want? If we kept going, we want the eastern half, right? So I'll try to pick another contrasting color. So if we only want half, I'm going to draw a line like right there, right? Mm -hmm. And which one do we want? We want the eastern half, correct? So it's going to be this little section right <laughs> here, correct? Mm -hmm. And we just keep breaking it down into tinier and tinier pieces as we go. Gotcha. Better now? Yeah, I don't want it to be just a bunch of lines that don't make sense. I want it to make sense for you. Okay? How many, how many acres in that section? 600. You know, she was the first one that said it, right? Because her brain's engaged with it now, right? That's what you have to do with this stuff. Every one of them is 640, and all you're doing is breaking it down into smaller and smaller pieces. Okay? How do we feel about that? Good? Good. Okay. All right, so we talked about a typical question already. We talked about the purpose of surveys. Why do we do surveys? What is the, what do we say the primary purpose of a survey was? To look for encroachments. To look for encroachments. Somebody opens that door, it won't be for long though, right? <laughs> 71 days and 12 weeks. I don't know what that is. That is not weather, that is schizophrenia. You know, I don't know how that goes. It's like, uh, uh, somebody did not take their lithium or something. You don't want to hear no, it's in that rectangular government surveys are not used in North Carolina. They are not used in North Carolina because what do we, what, no, we do not still use them in North Carolina. We use them on this test because what are we taking a test of? National. National stuff. What do we use? in North Carolina. Yeah. We, need amount. we wish we used the government rectangular <laughs> survey in North Carolina, but we don't. We do not. Okay? So the purpose of a survey, the primary purpose is to look for what? Encroachments. Encroachments. Exactly. That's the primary reason that we have a survey done is to look for those encroachments. Surveys are going to contain a lot of information. Primarily the boundaries of the property and the location of any improvements. Because remember, the definition of an encroachment is an improvement that does what? Goes over the property line. So in order to show that the improvements don't go over the property line, we need to show the location of the improvements on the survey. Does that make sense for everybody? And there are different kinds of surveys that show different levels of detail. Do you think, you think easements would show up on a survey? Yes, absolutely. Things like easements would want them to show up on a survey. Yeah. Now, we are not going to have time to get into much of the math in this chapter. But we are, don't, Mackenzie's like celebrating in the back corner back there. But we do want to introduce the basic concept. And I know I kept you 10 minutes late last week, so I owe you 10 minutes back today. I'm going to try to stick to that. I try not to, you know, over or under, right? Because encroach. encroach on the weekend. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, you do need to remember those. So this is part of your memorization. Remember, I gave you six formulas to memorize, correct? For next week. Part of your memorization is if you will notice, and if you look in your formula packet there, one of the things you're going to notice is that on several of those formulas, a magic number seems to pop up out of thin air. 43,560. Folks, this is the number of square feet in one acre of land. For every acre of land, which is roughly the size of what? Football field, right? So for every football field, there are 43,560 pieces of land about roughly this size. This is a square foot. So if you imagine 43,560 of those, you would have one acre of land. So an acre is a pretty big piece of land. Would you agree with that? Okay. 
you're going to have to learn to do the math of converting acreage into square feet and vice versa. Acreage into square feet and vice versa. Now, as far as memorizing the, the number 43560, you have to memorize it. Now, mm -hmm. some of my students over the years have tried to make up things. Um, I had one one time that just said, oh, 7 because she added the first two numbers together, wow. 4 and 3, and then the second two, 5 and 6, to make the 11, and then stuck a 0 <coughs> on the end. The only problem I have with that is I don't know what order to put the four and the three right. in, the five and the six in. You know, she apparently did not realize the problem with this scheme. But if that helps you, that's fine. You know, forty-three five sixty is the number you need. Okay, forty-three thousand five hundred and sixty. So whatever way you want to memorize it, you know, four cars on thirty-five doing sixty. That's you know, that's the way some people have done it. Whatever works, I'm good with all of it, you know. As long as you remember 43,560 square feet, you're going to be in good shape. Now, so, what I want to do is take a look at the formula package you've got there, and I want you to look at this conversion chart, because all we're going to do in the last couple minutes we have here is just do a couple of quick conversions. I want you to get in the habit of converting acreage into square footage or square footage into acres. So if we look at the T-bar, this is a different T-bar, but remember the dynamics don't change. If things are top and bottom, what math are we going to do? Divide. We're going to divide and things are side by side, we are going to multiply. multiply. So if they give you the number of acres and if they're asking you for total square footage, what are you going to, what are you going to do? Multiply. Acres times 43,560. If they give you total square footage and ask you for acreage, what are you going to do? Square feet divided by 43,560. Is everybody okay? You understand that so far? So I'm going to write down just a couple, make up a couple here, and I want you to do these conversions before we get out of here today. All right? All right. Number one, I want you to convert. 
many quarter acre lots are in one acre? Just for fun. And no, it's not a trick question. It seems like. And there's method to my name. <laughs> All right, on number one, what are we going to do if we want to convert square footage to acres? What are they asking us for? Are they asking us for square footage or are they asking us for acres? acres. acres. Asking acres. us for acres. If we look at the T-bar, what does the T-bar tell us we're going to do? If they're asking us for acres, we're only left with two other things in the T-bar, correct? So what are we going to do? Square feet. Square feet, what? Divided, Divided by 43,560. 43, so if we divide... 286,450 square feet by 43,560. I come up with 6.575981 acres. 871. 871, sorry. 87 acres. Everybody okay with that? Yes. So 6.5759 acres. Everybody alright with that number? Yes. Good. On number two. They have given us acres. What are they asking us for? They're asking us for square feet. So what does the T-bar say we're going to do? Multiply. We're going to multiply acres times 43,560, right? So if we take 26.75 times 43,560, big number, right? I've got 1,000,000. 165,230 square feet. Sound about right? Yeah. 1.165 billion square feet? Yes. Okay, we're good on that? Now, number three. It's a very difficult question. <laughs> How many quarter acre lots? Are in one acre. Four. 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 Does, Four. Does it depend on the land lot? No. No. Just for our purposes here, it does not. Right? Four. Not a trick question at all. How many quarter acre lots in one acre? Four. Four. Okay. Here's why I ask you that question in that way. There are going to be questions where they won't ask you how many acres you have. They'll say how many quarter acre lots can be developed in this many square feet. So the first thing you gotta do is convert it to acres, right? Mm -hmm. And then you won't know what to do. Right. You'll know, shit, I gotta do something <laughs> with the number four. <laughs> but you don't know if it is to multiply or divide. I'm gonna teach you right here how to do that with that simple question. That simple question is gonna be the way to get you home on those kinds of questions. You write down how many quarter acres eight lots are in an acre. And what's your answer? Four. Four. So write four lots and then come back and rewrite the thing they gave you. How many acres? One. One, One. acre. Now, if I ask you this question, how many quarter acre lots can you develop? You're going to write it out just like this, okay? Right? You're going to say, for every one acre, I have how many lots? Four. Four. What are they asking me for? Are they asking me for lots or acres? Eight. How many quarter acre lots? They're asking me for lots, right? But the math is going to get me to acres. So I've got to do a conversion. I've got to convert between acres and lots. Looking at this. How do you get from one to four? Do you multiply by four or do you divide by four? So what are you going to multiply the number of acres by? To get, what are you going to do with the number of acres to get to the number of lots? Are you going to multiply by four or are you going to divide by four? You're going to multiply by four. If you have acres and you need to get the lots with that kind of a question, you if you write it out this way, you should pretty clearly see, well, the only way I can get from acres to lots is what? Multiply by four, not divide. Because if you divide acres by lots, are you going to get to four? No, uh, if I divide one by four, am I going to get? Is my answer four? No. Or if I multiply one times four, four is my answer four. four? It will tell you which way to take the math. So let's try. It. Let's see. Okay. Now, if it asked the other way, you were supposed to divide. Is that what you're saying? If it asked what other lots, way? It asked for how many lots are in one acre. No, no it did. It did that. All right, so let's see here. Let me get a blank screen. 
and I'll give you a sample type question, and that'll be the last thing we do for today. I promise. How many one eight acre lots can be? We have a mismatch here because they're asking us a lot size than what? Acres. No, they're not asking us a lot size in square feet. How many? One eighth what? Acre. They're asking us a lot size in acres, but they've given us what? Square feet. We've got to match them up. So what are we going to do with that square footage? We're going to convert it into acres. So do that first. Convert that square footage into acres. Start to match things up. So we're looking through this, right? Okay. We're looking through this. Where are we left with? Okay. All right. So that's step one. Oh, you're coming to it. Is that why you're not doing it? I didn't know it. Here, we can fix that. Okay. Yes. I mean, I don't want to add random pieces. No, you can add. No, no, no. Quick. All right, so what'd you do over here? Okay. many lots are in one acre? You're making it harder than it is. When I said it was quarter acre lots, you told me instantly there was how many in there. How many are there now? Oh, okay. Hold on. There would be. I don't know. If there are half acre lots, how many lots are in an acre? If there are quarter acre lots, how many lots are in an acre? You notice a trend there? Oh, okay. Eight. There we go. So we'll write that down. So for every one acre, you have how many lots? Eight. The way that I think about it, that helps just a reciprocal of of one end. So just flip it. Yeah. That's it. So seventy-five. How many lots we got? Seventy-five. Seventy-five lots. Oh. Seventy-five lots. Because when you break that down to acres, it's nine point what? Three seven five. Nine point three seven five acres. And for every one acre, I have how many lots? Eight. 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 So to tell me how many lots that equals, what do I need to do with that? Multiply by eight. Times eight. And if you do that, that is what? Seventy-five <laughs> lots. Okay. 75 lots. I would have never done it. Now I know why I got it wrong on the test. I right. think you're, yeah, no, okay. you're not going to get crazy and throw like a different fraction, like two eighths or anything. No. Right? <laughs> It'll be one quarter. But. For every acre, you have how many lots? If it's an eighth acre lot, we'll do it as a half acre lot. 
Yeah, you know, I gotta ask the question. You think too much? I mean, you have to the That's what I would do too. You got a dollar bill? Now watch this. This is a valuable example right here. You don't have a dollar bill. I'm gonna do something I'm not ordinarily do. I'm gonna let you borrow a dollar. Y'all better watch. Felony in action. Okay? Tara's having problems telling me how many half acre lots are in an acre. This is, looks like a football field to me. It's green. It's shaped like a football field, right? How many half acre lots are in that acre? Two. Two. Oh. <laughs> Tape works wonders. <laughs> how many quarter acre lots are in that acre? Four. <laughs> How many eighth acre lots are in that acre? You can't tape it now. It's done. Can we tape it back for you? That's a good thing that wasn't a Does it make the point? Yeah. So, if I have. One dollar bill, and I need to know how many of those pieces are I can make. What do I need to do? Multiply times whatever number of pieces I broke it down into, and how many pieces did I break it down into? Eight. So, how many lots are in each acre? There are what? Eight of them. So, if I know how many acres, can't I multiply that times eight to get the number of lots? Does that make sense for everybody? All right. Y'all make up. See you, see you next week. Yes, chapter five. Chapter five for next week. Yeah. Oh, yeah.